and then go ahead and lie on your back. Um, if you have glasses, go ahead and take them off. Uh, take off shoes, belts, whatever, maybe clunky jewelry, whatever might get in your way. Um, if you need something under your head, go ahead and do that. You can have your camera tilted so I can see you. That's helpful, but it's not a big deal. Don't let that um, interrupt your experience. And then just start to uh, settle in and sense yourself against the floor. Notice how, how you sense yourself against the floor. How do you come home to yourself? And especially if you've been doing these lessons for a little while now, how has that changed over time? Has the floor become a little bit more familiar or um, have you grown accustomed to using the floor to sense yourself, to give you that feedback of where you are and how you are? And just Observe your breathing, not to change anything, but just to, to notice. Observe the movement of your low belly. just kind of get a sense of how you are right now in this moment. What kind of clues do you have about that? Whether it's your breathing or how you meet the floor or what's going through your mind or maybe whether you're feeling fidgety or calm or tired or maybe there's a mood or some other sensation of the temperature of the air, the temperature of your body. Sense the space around you. Get a sense of where the ceiling is, where the walls are to either side of you, and above your head, and below your feet. And for this lesson, you can have your feet standing and your knees bent, or you can leave your legs long, whatever works for you. Um, if your low back is a little bit uncomfortable with your legs long, you might find that it's better with your knees bent. Um, and as always, this is your lesson, so you do just what interests you. If you fall asleep, great. If you drift off, or you space out, or you want to just listen, or watch, or whatever, um, all of that is welcome. I trust that you know what's best for you, and that you are going to take care of yourself. So, have your, your legs, your feet, however you'd like them, and then bring your hands to rest on your chest, so on your lower ribs, um, like just above your your belly. So 
in your lower ribs there, and your elbows can rest on the floor next to you. And begin this movement of, with the right hand, of just rotating the hand a little bit so that the thumb side of your hand comes away from your chest. Like you wanted to turn your palm to, towards your face. And you, the hand can still rest on your ribs. And just do that slowly a few times. And you feel how your fingers can be relaxed. So it's almost like a, um, a cupping kind of movement with your hands as you're your hand rolls, your fingers can curl in a little bit, and feel if you can do less with your thumb, can your thumb just be passive and come along for the ride, and you pause in between each movement, so it's like each time you do it is like the first time. Feel how the weight shifts from maybe more towards the center of your palm to the pinky side of your hand. And just notice what you do with your eyes. With your eyes closed or open. Just notice, is your attention drawn somewhere? Where do you look? And feel, can you still breathe easily? And now, as you turn your palm towards your face, go ahead and look towards your palm. And you don't need to move your head. It can just be a movement of the eyes or even just in your imagination. As if you had something written on your palm that you wanted to see. And your hands just resting on your chest, on your ribs. So it's just this rotating of the wrist, of the hand. And now do the opposite with your eyes. So as you turn the palm towards your face, look up and then come back to neutral so it's just your right hand and your hands are resting on your lower ribs so you just rotate the hand the thumb side of the hand comes away from your chest the weight comes on to the pinky side of your hand so that your palm turns towards your face a little bit. And you look up as you do that and notice if there's a difference in the quality of movement when you look up versus when you look towards your palm. And feel, can you do even less? Especially on those days where you feel kind of frazzled maybe, or frustrated, or antsy, or uncomfortable. 
we do even less. Because it's not the movement itself that makes the difference. It's your attention to the movement, your attention to yourself. It's how you do the movement. And then come back to looking towards your palm as you turn your palm towards you. Just rotating the hand and then bringing it back to rest on your chest. And notice is it a little bit different now? Has the quality, has, has playing with your eyes in some way changed the quality of the movement? And then leave that and just pause here for a moment. Lengthen your legs if you'd like, or you can leave them. And even after just that little bit, sense your right side, your right arm, maybe your right, right side of your chest, or your right shoulder, your right hip the right side of your face, and just see, is that any different from the left side or from when we started, just after, just from the little bit that we've done so far. feet standing if you'd like, and your hands are still resting on your lower ribs, your elbows resting comfortably on the floor, and begin to do the opposite movement, so lifting the pinky side of your hand away and turning, rotating your hand towards your foot. The thumb side of your hand still rests on your ribs, supported by your body. And you do that a bunch of times. Or you just do it once or twice. Whatever works for you. Or maybe you find you want to do it in your imagination. And feel where you can do less, where you can soften. Notice your breathing. And then notice what you do with your eyes. Where do you look? How do your eyes participate in this movement, if at all? So now, as you rotate your hand towards your palm, towards your foot, go ahead and look up. Feel, does that change the quality of the movement? Maybe that's what you were already doing, or maybe it's the opposite of what you were doing. And then see what it's like to look down towards your hand as you turn the hand towards your foot. And just add a different sensation or a different quality in some way. 
quality, maybe in the, the smoothness of the movement, or the size of the movement, or the sense of effort. And again, look up as you turn the hand towards your foot. Just doing this in your own time, in your own way. Letting the fingers be soft. And leave that and take a rest. And as always, if you feel like you need to rest on your side or on your stomach or in a different position just to get a break from being on your back, you're always welcome to. You don't need to wait for me to rest. You can rest whenever you like and come back to it. So now when you're ready, begin to combine those two movements. So rolling the hand towards your face, and towards your foot. You can maybe imagine that you have like a, a headlight on your palm. And you want to change where you're shining it. Or maybe it's a really small movement of your hand and you just lift the thumb side of your hand enough for a tiny bit of that light to, to creep out and then you lift the pinky side of your hand just for a little bit of that light to shine through. And you feel where you can make that easier, where can you reduce the effort. Observe your breathing. Let it be soft and uninterrupted. And notice where you look. So coordinate it now in such a way that you look towards your palm as your palm turns towards you and you look up as your palm turns away from you towards your foot. And do that in an easy way, not in a way that you strain. And then try the opposite and see what's the difference for you, which one's easier for you. And of course, just based on our structure, like we all share a, a more or less similar anatomy, there's going to be a way that's theoretically more congruent, but each of us has our own patterns and our own habits and our own backgrounds, our own experiences, whether you play a certain sport or play a certain instrument or the kind of environment you were brought up in or your schooling and education when you were young or 
the different experiences you've had in your life, all of those things are unique to each of us and affect us in different ways. So you might find that um, while for most people it's easier one way, for you it's easier the other way. And there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong or unusual about that at all. And then go back to coordinating your eyes so you look towards your palm. And then you look up as your palm goes towards your feet. And just see if that's changed. And when you feel like you've explored that as much as you'd like, leave it and take a rest. Sense your breathing, feel your contact with the floor, just notice how that's changed. Are you able to let the floor support you in a different way? Or to conform to the floor in a different way? Or maybe it feels like you stayed the same, but the floor has changed its shape. Good. So now let's, actually before we do that, um, just sense again the difference between your right side and your left side. So feel your right eye, the right side of your mouth, the right side of your face. Feel how your right shoulder rests on the floor, the right side of your chest. Observe the movement of your low abdomen on the right side. Maybe lengthen your legs for a moment and just see is there a difference in the sense of length or weight of your right leg compared to your left. And then sense your left side. And maybe there's a sense too that one side of you is bigger or more open or expansive than the other side, or wider, or longer, or um, maybe it's a different sensation, maybe heavier or lighter or more awake, more present in your your self-image, your sensing of yourself. When you're ready, bend your knees if you'd like to. And bring your hands back onto your chest, your lower ribs. And begin this exploration with the left hand now. So just turning the left palm towards your face. And since we've already done this on the right side, you might be inclined to go a little bit quicker or to skip ahead. But see if you can be just as curious. Because even though it's the same instruction, it's a different hand. It's a different side of you, so it's a, it's a different experience. Can you approach it 
as if this is something altogether new. Sense your breathing. When you're ready, if you're so inclined, begin to play with the eyes a little bit and see how do you involve the eyes in that movement, and how do how do your eyes participate in this movement? See if your cat wants to try out some Feldenkrais too. And then play with coordinating your eyes in one way. So maybe you start by looking towards the palm as the palm comes to face you. And maybe you start the opposite way. And then try it the other way, see how that's different. Does something different happen in your neck, the side of your neck, or the back of your neck? Maybe there's a different sensation in your hand. And then try it again the first way. Is the movement of your eyes a little bit easier? Is the movement of your hands? And can you feel as though that's one idea? Like rather than you move the hand and you move the eyes, that it's just one idea, it's the unfolding of one movement. Good. Leave that and pause for a moment. And these pauses are great, not only for if you're getting a little bit fatigued, maybe this is a, a smaller lesson than others, but also for you to be able to sense the difference. It's a big part of how we learn is, right, because it won't, it won't stick otherwise, but when your brain is able to feel, okay, this is how it was before, and this is how it is now, and I sense that that's made a difference, and that that difference is important or useful, then it starts to stick a little bit. And your brain will process that on its own. We're wired for efficiency. So if you give yourself a chance to sense an easier way of doing things, That'll just become incorporated on its own into your everyday movement, your everyday life. And then also, it's important to give your attention a break. Not to focus, just to to rest your attention. So when you're ready, bend your knees and stand your feet if you'd like to, or leave your legs long. Bring your hands onto your lower ribs. And let's see, where are we? 
So begin to explore what it's like to turn the left palm towards the foot, towards your left foot. And still you can let the fingers be soft, maybe the fingers curl in a little bit to form a, a cupping shape as you roll the hand. And see what it's like to do this half the size, half as much, maybe half as slow also. But even slower, even smaller, and feel is there extra effort you can get rid of, let go of. Where can you, what can you continue to let go of? Maybe you're doing something with your jaw, or your tongue, or, I don't know, your foot. What are you, what are you doing that's extra, that's unnecessary, that's maybe not helpful, or maybe getting in your way? And maybe you can let go of that, and maybe you can just notice it. And that's great too. Just the noticing in and of itself will make a difference over time. And now as you roll your left palm towards your foot, play with what you do with your eyes. When do you look up, and when do you look towards your hand? Just softly and easily. And then try it the other way. And see what kind of difference that makes. And even if you can't quite sense the difference or you can't put words to it, it's remarkable what your brain and your nervous system are able to pick up on. So you try coordinating your eyes in the opposite way. Come back to the first way you tried with the eyes. Good. Leave that and rest for a moment. And now, when you're ready, combine those two ideas. So rolling the left hand towards your face and towards your foot. And notice where you look. So try looking towards the palm, and then look up as your palm goes towards your foot. And then try the opposite. Look up as your palm turns up, and look down as your palm turns towards your foot. And then go back to the first way. See if that changed at all. Okay. Leave that for a moment.
And now see what it's like to do that with both hands. So turning both hands towards your face and towards your feet. Still just letting your hands rest on your lower ribs. Being supported. That's just this rolling kind of movement. When you look towards your palms, when you look up as your palms turn away from you. And notice, do you look more towards one hand than the other? Try coordinating, coordinating your eyes in the opposite way. for a moment. And if you feel like you've done enough or you notice yourself starting to space out or fall asleep or become disinterested, maybe you just leave it at that and that's enough for you. And if you'd like, you can explore turning the hands in opposite directions. So one hand turns towards your face while the other turns towards your foot. And then you switch, alternating back and forth. Just letting your hand all over your ribs, supported by your chest, by your, your body. And which palm do you look towards, or which hand do you follow? Try it the other way. Look towards the other hand. So you kind of have the tools to play with it a little bit in a way that's interesting to you. You notice what your attention is drawn to and what kind of combinations you can create. Observe your breathing. And maybe you want to go back to turning the hands together again in the same direction and see if that any different. Just gently and easily. Maybe you find that the movements become easier over the course of the lesson and so you want to do more bigger movement, bigger range of movement. Maybe you find that you don't need to do such a big movement. That it's more interesting for you just to do a little bit. And when you feel like you've explored as much as you'd like for right now, leave that and take a rest.
Just sensing yourself on the floor. You can bring your arms down by your side and lengthen your legs if that helps you to have a, a, a more clear reference point, a better sense of yourself. You just sense yourself against the floor. What kind of feedback do you get from the floor? Where do you meet the floor now? Where do you let the floor support you in a different way? Observe the movement of your lower abdomen. See how that is now. Sense your right side and your left side. How has that changed? And is there also a general change? So really we were mostly just working with the hands and the eyes. But is there something more, more general that's different. The sensation of your whole self or your your image of yourself or maybe your your mood, maybe your mind is a little bit quieter or your nervous system feels a little bit calmer or less less staticky. So just sense for a moment what's changed in these last 45 minutes or so. And while you're lying here on the floor, just imagine one thing that you do in your everyday life that and imagine how it could be something little like brushing your teeth or maybe um, something like playing an instrument or sitting at your computer or um, just something little that you do every day walking maybe and just imagine what it would be like to do that now in this way of being, this way of sensing yourself. Whatever changes you notice from this lesson. And then when you're ready, slowly bend your knees, roll to one side. Very slowly in your own time, roll to sitting, and when you're ready, come to stand. And give yourself some time to keep sensing yourself, so stay with your internal sensation. Don't pay attention to the computer. And when you're in standing, just give yourself a moment to feel what it's like to be in this orientation to gravity. What's it like to be upright now? And then take a minute to walk around and see how that is. <laughs> 